All right, we actually got it. We got on. Oh my God, this is so amazing. We're back. We're here with Bella, and God willing, this Wi-Fi stays. Bella, you're you're showing your better side, honey. Why don't you turn around? Bella, come here. There you go. Look at you. You look like a Spuds McKenzie dog. We're a little late to the party, but we're here at Gordon Biersch on 4th Street Live, right here at the corner of Liberty and 4th. And uh, Ozzy, would you please introduce your guests? Sure. I got Sergeant, to my left here, Sergeant Mark Sabatini. He's been with, uh, he's with LMAS, and I have Major Kim Verbrink, who is a commander of the 7th Division, LMPD. Well, I am so delighted that you guys made it here today. And in spite of the uh, few issues that we've had getting online with the million people of downtown, we are actually online now, although a few moments late, and um, I'd like to know about the genius idea that you had, Major Burbrink, to get animals adopted from Louisville uh, Metro Animal Services and to make the police play a role in that. Uh, I would love to take credit for said genius <laughs> idea, but it was uh, really a collaborative effort and it would not be a success if it weren't for the officers of the 7th Division. Um, it started out as a quite simple idea a few months ago, just an effort that I had to show the officers that I appreciate them. I wanted to do something different, uh, something that they would actually really enjoy. I'm an animal lover myself, most people are, so I immediately thought, oh, the shelter animals. I called Ozzy, called him, he and I had several conversations, and, and honestly, my idea is very simplistic. It started out with just, hey, can we bring a couple couple dogs to roll call? We'll, Walk them around Highview Park. We'll go get a pup cup. You know, I thought it would a be pup a pup cup. I pup love cup. that. A, a great uh, initiative for the officers. They would really enjoy it. And, and Ozzy took it one step further and said, "Why don't we put them in the police cars and go on patrol?" And I said, "Can we do that?" And he said, "Well, sure." That's said, why okay. they pay him the big bucks, right? <laughs> I said, yeah. "Okay, let's do it." <laughs> and it, uh, it's been a couple months in the making. Uh, Stephanie Jackson, the foster coordinator that Ozzy hooked me up with, is absolutely amazing and a mastermind behind this. The The field trip was already a program that Metro Animal Services utilizes and, and with Ozzy and Stephanie we just took it one step further and incorporated it into a, a police initiative and now we uh, take the pups and we go on patrol. Well good job and how long has this actually been going on? Yesterday was day one. I thought so because yes. we saw the post uh, probably midnight <laughs> that said you were doing it so was she a late night police officer paw on patrol she was she's a little sluggish today and she <laughs> is uh she has late watch hangover uh honestly when i met with stephanie yesterday to discuss some logistics i had no intent of taking anyone with me and after her tour and speaking with her I said, okay, well, uh, how about I take one today? And she said, all right. And I walked out the door with Flex, the Rottweiler mix, and uh, he worked day work yesterday, and we took him back, and by that time, Late Watch had already heard about it, and they said, well, can we go get one too? And <laughs> then we got Bella, and we've had Bella for uh, since about six o'clock yesterday evening. Oh my gosh, well, she is absolutely precious. And um, Ozzy, I wanna know what you think about, how did you actually choose the animals that are going out on these runs with the police officers and do they return them to Metro Animal Services every night after they've finished their job? They can. How's I mean, that you working know, as out? we venture into this, um, with me, the way I operate, nothing's off the table. If it's something positive that is going to be in the best long term home, my gosh, that yeah, is unbelievable. absolutely amazing. So it looks like she's already going to be going home. Let's hope so. Tell me about the characteristics, uh, and you can jump in here anytime you want to, uh, Mark, because he, you're definitely um, a skilled animal lover and handler. What kind of characteristics are you looking for in a dog that's going to go out on a police ride? Well, <laughs> police, I know... I know she's sitting there looking at you she adoringly. Me, that's yeah. got to be part of it. Yeah, that's it right there. Well, number one is how well the dog is for obedience. Um, I know that uh, I've seen cases where people are do testing dogs. I don't know if they're going to be good police dogs. How they respond to objects like using a ball or something like that. Are they good at re retrieving or are they kind of, eh, I'm not really interested in it. So that's one thing I know is, I look, is the peak interest of the dog is how excited does he get to go after it. And also it has to be, I guess you could say the demeanor of a dog, uh, the, the more, the, the kind of the, the nature, how he or she um, reacts.
basically. You know, is it is the dog going to be very well disciplined to go ahead and, and do some things that the police officers have, um, whether it's narcotics or searching for people? Yeah, so, we uh -huh. always need help with long stay dogs. You know, that's been the great thing about, you know, our pet forward, our free pet options yes. is that we are able to move them out and have empty kennels. Several years ago, a dog like Bella had been here since January would not have made it this long. What and is that a, is the sad part. What is a long stay considered? When More we look at week? long stay, we start, no, no, we yeah. start looking, um, because a lot of them, if they come in and they need medical attention, we may have them for 14 days yes. because they're on medicine. So that's okay. But when we start, when I start getting worried, it's probably the 45 to 60 day mark. And that's just because, you know, we have a lot of large breed dogs and we only have so many kennels for them at Animal House. So a lot of dogs, they don't get to be on the showroom floor. So by getting out and being paws on patrol, they're out in the public now and they get to be seen. This dog is behaving so perfectly. Yes. She is. I don't even know how to describe what she's doing. You're talking about the characteristics for a police dog. Well, here you you're, go. Then. You're looking at characteristics <laughs> for a police dog, and I think that part of the reason that she's just so good is that she's wiped out. That could be. <laughs> well, she's calm. She's collected. She's perfect. I took Wyatt to the vet yesterday, but only after taking him for a run, you know, where he chased his ball and was a complete maniac for about an hour, <laughs> and he was absolutely perfect in yeah. the vet. So that works out really well um, what's the what's the the what do you call it the uh, capacity right now I don't know not capacity at LMAS but the met, what is uh, what is the number of dogs that you actually have on the premises this this Manson morning we had a hundred a hundred a hundred and probably another uh, 15 to 18 in animal house and wow. I've been there 22 months and that's we're you know I want to knock on wood because we're probably running 22 to 25 dogs less per day than when I started. Well, and what that means is we start every morning with empty kennels. So that is huge. Well, I can tell you that in my experience with working with Metro Animal Services for a number of years, almost 10 years at this point, there were times when there were 400 dogs yes. in, that, in those facilities, Ozzy, and you have done wonders getting those numbers down well I have it's been a it's it's been a long road there's a lot of been a lot of people that's come and gone that's done some positive stuff but you know what you have to understand in the community is that if four months from now I got 400 we're in trouble and that's where we need the community's help come adopt from us rescue from us and please spay and neuter your pet there's the key right that's there the key. you're a you're an animal lover Major Absolutely. Burbank so tell us about your pets um, well, I have a I have a nine year old Rhodesian Ridgeback. I She's love my those. baby, and uh, I have two rescue kitty cats that are actually my daughters, <laughs> um, but they're mine now. I, I do most of the maintenance for them. So we uh, are an adoption house uh, along with with my Ridgeback, and and like Ozzy said, the partnership is something that we are encouraging so much. And while they're able to view the animals for adoption online, a unique part of this program is that we're almost like a mobile uh, humane society to go out and actually let the people interact with them because they can see the pets online but you know they actually need to see them and touch them and pet them and you interact do. with them and you so absolutely uh, do. we facilitate that for the community we we will get these dogs and bring them out and the community has just been an overwhelming response um, they are spoiled rotten when they come to the seventh division uh, my police division is covered in dog toys, dog treats, and all the guys are already talking about bringing in pet beds and they want to adopt one for the division. So um, it's it's absolutely been, just 24 hours, it's been uh, an amazing experience and a lot of fun to watch. De-stressor well, for you guys? Absolutely. I mean, police work <laughs> is hard and that's part of uh, my motivation to, to have done it in the first place. Um, you know, there's almost a parallel between the officers okay. and, okay. and the dogs in the shelter. Uh, you know, being police work is hard. It's difficult. It, it's stressful at times. It's it's sad. It's scary. Um, the animals in the shelter haven't always had the best life. You know, they've had some tough experiences. They have stress and anxiety, and it's amazing to bring one of these animals and uh, immediately when when they meet, when the officers, when I bring the the animal in, and when I bring the pups in, and the officers see it, it's it's there's a bond and it's instantaneous and it is genuine and it is 
so hard for the officers to say goodbye to them at the, at the end of their time. So I can it's, only imagine. And it's on both parts. I mean, the, and the dogs are bonding with the officers instantaneously, just like they are. I mean, it is smiles all around. It's, you know, you take an otherwise serious atmosphere and it is fun. The officers enjoy coming to work. Do you have any history on this poor pup? Where she came from? What Bella, she, what, what her Bella story was, is? was surrendered to us. Um, Bella will do it be best in a home without cats and probably <laughs> with you. And, 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 and my husband just texted in on Facebook Live right yeah. now and said, Thank you, not, do not, <laughs> Thank you. I thought you were going to say your husband texted and said, Do not bring Bella home. Already, Kim. Yes. Already. That's been done. It's gonna... Go ahead, Ozzy. And you know, this is so <laughs> distressing for the dog. That's what people just don't understand is putting a dog in a cage like that all of a sudden with a hundred other dogs screaming and barking all the oh time God, it never gets any peace of rest yeah. so by getting it out here it, it's de-stressed now you know where before if if last week you were to walk through the cage you won't recognize you wouldn't have recognized this dog and that's the sad part she's got your just don't worry she's she's, she's not going to do anything but she's got your wire Mark's under her neck so just don't okay. get up mark <laughs> don't get up and I don't try think to I'm walk going away i don't think she's going she's got your little microphone she's wire ready for a nap she's she is about, ready for a yeah. nap well it's because you said she had what did you call it kim late shift she worked late watch oh, late, late, late watch, watch hangover. Late hangover. hangover i love yeah. that that's perfect she loves people i mean just jumped right up in my desk chair uh you know jumped up in the couch rolled over for a belly rub i mean she is the absolute sweetest dog. She is a sweet dog. Now, she will I'll, make somebody a really great pet. I want to know a little bit about your police experience. Kim? Oh, Ozzy's yes. not a police officer. Not anymore. I don't <laughs> know nothing were. about that. I forgot you it all. Were. Claim him. Mark, are you a police officer? Animal control sergeant. Yeah. Were you a police officer? Uh, I had previous law enforcement experience. Not gotcha. police, though, but gotcha. other law enforcement experience. Okay, perfect. All right, you're in, Major Burbrink. Tell me about your police experience. Yes, uh, I've been on the department little almost 15 and a half years wow uh, yeah she started um, when she was 10 obviously thank you <laughs> You're my favorite. Uh, I've only been in the seventh division just a little under a year I uh, got promoted last year and took over as commander of the seventh and in my short time there I've just really been able to start some initiatives and programs and and just you know, be officer and community focused, and and the officers feel the same way, and it's it's been great. I think I see our other guest who's out there on the porch, and his name is um, the Fathead's Rescue Puppy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I have absolutely no idea what the, what the puppy's name is, and this guy is named Dane. So, Jasmine. Yes. Hi, Danielle. Well, I'll tell you what. If you want to just sit tight for a few minutes, we're talking with our friends from Louisville Metro Animal Services. Okay. And we'll get you and Dane and what's the puppy's name? Uh, Galen. Galen. Yes. Like the nursing school? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. We've got that figured out. Um, once again, 15 years of experience. Yes. <clears throat> Kim. Yes. 15 years of experience. What is the most important thing that you have learned about animals in Seriously? your police experience? Because I know you guys must come up against some scary situations with with particularly with dogs that you don't know and you have to deal with them and you know it's really not that different than people it's all about communication and body language is a huge part of communication <laughs> look uh, at her if you're not a threat to them most of the time they won't be a threat to you when there is a dog issue and i'd like to have the two of you address this because a lot of people don't know when there's a dog issue between neighbors lots of excessive barking or jumping at the fence or getting out or whatever what is the process that we go through with little metro animal services and do the police play into that at all they can um, our process is first off we'd love for neighbors to get along and try to work it out first um, before you come to us if you come to us with a complaint obviously we can't be there 24 7 to watch and hear the dog bark at 4 a.m. right so normally what we will do is we will send a letter to the person that has the issue saying hey it's been brought to our attention that your dog is barking at such and such hours can you please take care of it if you don't here's what's going to happen um we'll can try you please that please send it on a late watch shift so that there it we crashes go. and <laughs> sleeps it the rest of the time so then after if that don't work then we will actually send an animal control out officer out to talk to the person to see if hey did you get the letter what did you not understand about it try to do one more time of just communication maybe and then if we have to go to the third thing would be 
the complainant actually signs a witness statement and we get it into the system. And that's when you get involved, right, yeah. Mark? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So people call 911. They do. I know. They do. Do you dispatch an officer for issues Absolutely. like that? You do. Absolutely. So th there are some cases where people feel like a dog is being abused, and that's a very scary thing. And I'm not going to confirm or deny that I have taken a dog out of a hot car in the middle of summer without anyone's permission and possibly with the use of a broken glass. I'm not confirming or denying that. However, there are situations that are just absolutely impossible when you have uh, an animal that you feel is being abused and you don't feel like you can get anybody to listen to you and you feel like going through that process of the letter and the checkup and then maybe somebody doing something is just too lengthy. So is that the point at which the police would become involved and it would become no, a criminal no. situation? If, if, if we we're talking about a dark barking dog, but if there's abuse or cruelty, there ain't. there's no letters. We will step right in and these guys here can actually do search warrants. Oh, you can. They sure can. So wow. now well, normally we would take a case. They can do that too. But normally if we get the complaint, we're going to get the information, do the search warrant. And then once we get it all together, that's when we call LMPD so they can go on the search warrant with us just for safety issues because our guys are not authorized to carry weapons. So we would ask LMPD to go with us, make the initial entry. We're going to take the pet. What do you carry for protection? Well, we got uh, we do have pepper spray. We do have a collapsible baton. Yeah. Um, I always tell officers a good idea is have something in your hand when you get out of the truck. Um, many of our officers are actually carry a catch pole right up to the door, even if it's on a minor complaint. And a catch pole is that thing with the noose on exactly, the end of it that helps you to get but, control uh, of the dog. At least have a clipboard or something in your hand if you need it. Now, personally, I have not. I, I it's been several years since I've had a dog come at me really aggressively. Yes, it happens, but. You just, um, I would say most of the time, no, you know, but you always got to be prepared for that situation yeah. and that scenario. <gasps> Hi, Bella. <laughs> I'm looking at you. I'm making noises at you so you look <laughs> up at the camera and show everybody how adorable you are. How many animals are adoptable right now, Ozzy, over at Animal House? Because I know you do intake through Manslick, but you adopt everybody. And you're, you said you were actually starting to adopt oh. dogs at Manslick. We do. I would say as far as worked up, um, this morning there was probably 20 at Animal House, and we've probably got 30 to 35 that are worked up at Manslick and yeah, ready to go. If we get a spot at Animal House, we'll move them there. If somebody comes and, or sees it online and they want to come to Manslick and look at them, we'll adopt them right out of there. Um, just today when they were picking up dogs, how um, many, we How many did you guys get? We, we've only gotten two so far. Okay. The canine unit was out there today walking dogs. Awesome. Now, isn't that great? It was great. It was for Mayor's, uh, Mayor Fisher's give a day. Yep. And they came out and walked, oh Lord, 20 or 25 oh, dogs, took them out for awesome. 15 or 20 minutes, what brought them back. a great combination so, of efforts. Yeah. That's great. I think we're, while they're there, we adopted two out of Manslick while they were there in a two-hour period. Oh my God. So, Major Burbrink, um, when you go to pick up a dog and you take it out on the street, Tell me what the process is. When are you going to actually show this dog off to people? Are you going to get out of your car and walk in busy areas with the dog on leash, or how are you going to do it? How are you going to promote the adoptable pet? Oh, absolutely. That's that, and the officers can't wait to get out there with when they have the dog to uh, show them all. So uh, we visited. Let's see, we visited Starbucks yesterday. <laughs> we visited Southern High School uh, at dismissal to make sure all the kids got home safe. That's so cute. Uh, they visited restaurants last night, hotels. I mean, they're just they're everywhere with them, and um, you know they really want to get them out there, and people want to see them, and they're flagging officers down. So, and as the program um, gets more popular more popular yeah, and common then you know crazily. people will be looking for us and I hope it expands I, I truly do and, I do too and our goal is to every dog that we you know take out on patrol with us we want to adopt it out we want to find a home for everyone so what's the adoption process Ozzy we've got these police officers taking these beautiful animals out and somebody says I really want to take Bella home what do we have to do what we're going to do is as she said as we progress is we're going to give them a packet uh, with information in it that's one through ten exactly what the person needs to do. How to go online, fill out an adoption um, questionnaire, who to call, what to do. So that way they got something in their hand. I'm even thinking of some kind of little scarf or something that says, hey, adopt me. Yeah, like you know, that so one So that right when there. they get out of the car with it, 
everybody recognized, what do you mean adopt me? So <laughs> to draw more attention in, so. Nobody's gonna question a police officer walking into a place with a dog either. No. <laughs> Nobody's gonna oh, say, God. you can't bring that dog in here. Well, they're not gonna question the dog. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> you can't bring that police officer in here. Well, she is, uh, she's doing amazingly well, and I think that she probably has uh, understood that she's on camera now. And Angie Gill says, I love it, those babies will get adopted faster by being out in public. Yes, Angie, you are absolutely right. And uh, Frances Weinstock is watching. She's a big dog lover. Denise Lewis Faber is on with us. Marlon Gaines, thank you so much. Ron Zender, Sil Cindy Alvey, Tony Lindauer. Tony Lindauer Tony is watching. Lindauer, good old Tony. Hey, Tony. Danielle Elise Bartley and Sarah Byerly, thank you guys so much for being with us. Ian Bottomley, James Green, Sheila Robbins, Terry Howard, Kim Kelly. Cheryl Klein, Helter Lefew, that is a really long name. Taylor Campbell and John Clay. There's my buddy Chris Wilson and David Finley. I'd just like to give a shout out to people who are watching because they're gonna share this broadcast and get us even more viewers to see what's going on with these babies. In case you're wondering what we're doing, this is a group of folks who are going to do wonders for adopting animals. We have uh, Major Kim Burbank from the 7th Division of the Louisville Metro Police Department, Ozzy uh, Gibson, who is the head of Louisville Metro Animal Services, and an uh, officer who is uh, in charge of everything out there, because he's the guy who goes out and gets the dogs, Mark Sabatini. Thank you so much for the hard work that you do. You're on the front line, and we appreciate you. And you. this is Bella's butt. <laughs> Come here, Bella. She likes to show off all parts. Come on, Bella. Look at you, little Spuds McKenzie girl. We're at Gordon Biersch, and the reason we're here is because this is the night that we're raising money for Parkinson's. Do you guys know anybody who has Parkinson's disease? Because it's pretty heartbreaking. Yeah. And uh, it takes lives early. Of course, Muhammad Ali had Parkinson's, and um, the general manager here, Jason Scott, has it as well. They started about four years ago, started maybe 3,000 bucks. They're expecting to, to raise $40,000 tonight. Wow. Cool. So we're inviting everybody to come down for pints for Parkinson's. It starts at five, and it will go until 10 o'clock. There will be beer, bands, and boxing is how they're, they're yeah. advertising this. So um, the reason I brought Metro Animal Services and Louisville Police Department on is because they are working on a joint program to get animals adopted. And we're gonna ask them to give you just a, a little uh, 411, as they say, on what we've discussed before. For those of you who are with us at the beginning of the hour, uh, we appreciate you tuning back in. Um, Major Burbrink says that it wasn't her idea, but a lot of people are giving her credit for it. Tell us how this came to be. <laughs> uh, well, again, like I said, it was just um, a simple effort on my part to show my officers that I appreciate everything they do and, and to make uh, their workplace a little more enjoyable. Um, and being an animal lover, I, you know, I reached out to Ozzy. And, uh, Who is also an animal lover, he by is. the way. He is. <laughs> and uh, we discussed you know, bringing some animals out to roll calls to interact with officers and you know, let them hang out for a while and, and then Ozzy took their field trip program one step further and, and just said, hey, why don't, why don't we put them in patrol cars? And I said, oh, hey, can we do that? So you actually thought of it. Well, yeah, <laughs> let's just do that. Credit where well, you know, due. there's no reason not to. He, he does not say no, and I push, exactly. I push the limits. I test that theory often. So And that's um, good because we have to question. If we didn't question, we wouldn't be at the point that we are with no kill. Right. And I, I do want to let people know the 7th Division is now a repository for Global Metro Animal Service donations. So oh. if anyone has any uh, items, products, That's anything great. they would like to donate, um, they can come by the 7th Division and drop it off there. And Where is it located? At 7201 Outer Loop. It's the government center. And we'll be more than happy to take their donations and, and pass them along to... <laughs> To Ozzy and the pups. Oh, she's like, what's going on there? There's a waiter going by really fast. Maybe she's got something for me. <laughs> I'm just going to jump up here and look at her. How old do you think she is? Bella, we believe, is somewhere between two and four years old. Yeah. Well, she's awful cute. She's got really nice muscles. Yes. She is a muscular dog, and she looks like she's she's uh, put on a little bit of weight, maybe, since you've had her. Yeah. Because it looks like her ribs were getting a little thin there, the poor baby. I know you guys are on a schedule. And if you need to leave, you just tell me, and we'll jump up and let you go. But I love having you here. Okay. And as long as you can stay, I know Mark is sitting there going, I've got work to do. This so I'm okay. I love it. <laughs> Mark sure? gets to take Bella. He loves being on camera, <laughs> doesn't he? And Ozzy, of course, you are, you are Mr. Personality when it comes to being on camera. I love that hour that you and Tia and I did down at Animal House. Mm -hmm. 
You did an excellent job selling Metro Animal Services. Right. I'd like you to explain to us what no-kill actually means, because a lot of people are under the impression that that is no animals die whatsoever in the shelter, and it's not possible to do that. Correct. But you've reached a certain threshold. Correct. You know, um, back when the word no-kill first came about in, what, the late 80s, 90s, that was a wake-up call across America that things were going on in shelters that shouldn't. Um, there's a lot of categories you got to get to to be no kill. You know, you have to have a 90% live release rate or higher. 90%. 90% or higher. You cannot euthanize for time or space. Um, you got to have a foster coordinator, rescue coordinator, aggressive marketing with your um, adoptions. So there's a lot of things that got to happen. You know, and our goal last year was, and my goal as a director is not to have to euthanize an adoptable pet because we run out of time or we run out of space. You know, the, the time and space thing is what interests me the most because that used to be the excuse for having to euthanize animals. We just yes, don't have the room for them. And, and, or and they've been here too long. Yeah, and what people have to understand, you know, I've heard a lot of people, oh, you've reached no-kill status. That was last year. Okay, that don't mean that there's a piece of paper that says you're always going to be no-kill. What has to happen this year is, number one, people need to continue to adopt and rescue and take care of their own pets. If, we do, if he goes out and starts picking up hundreds of strays this year, and we can't move them, guess what? We're not no-kill no more. So even so though- this is such an awesome plan. Yeah, even though it's, it's my responsibility every day to try to make sure all those things happen, we, I am only as good as the public makes me. If you don't come in and adopt and you don't take care of your pet and you just drop it in an alley, then we're, gonna, we're not gonna be no-kill, all right? So there's a lot that's gotta happen every day all year long for us to remain in that category. Well, and you know, um, the Aero Fund recently brought in a pup that was found in a duffel bag in the woods with amputated front yeah. paws. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of stuff that you don't want to find happening to animals, especially if they're being brought in yeah, to Metro got, Animal Services yeah. with that kind of damage. And what a lot of people don't know when they talk about euthanasia and live release, all that. If he goes out today and picks up an animal that's hit on I-65, and we take that to an animal hospital and there's nothing they can do, that counts against us because we touched it. Oh, and we get hundreds of those cases. So when you talk about, I can, next year, I could be, um, say we're no kill for time and space and only have an 88% live release rate because it depends on what they pick up and what shape somebody's left it in. You see what I'm saying? That's scary. It is scary, and it's terrible. The details, its they call it the devil's in the details, right? Yeah. So when a police officer is called out, and I'm just kind of going from sure. thought to thought, when a police officer is called out on a, a complaint about animal abuse, what's the process? What do you do, Major well, Burbrink? Like Ozzy said earlier, and Sergeant Sabatini, um, we take those complaints very serious. Um, you know, cruelty to am animals is a very real issue, and it's, it's a difficult run to make um, for officers, for anybody. Uh, we take it very serious. We do an investigation on that to see if there, if it meets the criteria for criminal charges. And you know that information is passed along to animal control, and we partner with them. And search warrants are done, or an animal's removed. Um, sometimes people are charged. Sometimes courts involved. So it's we, it's a very serious issue. Tia Barnes. Uh oh. <laughs> is logging in and she says Tara today the LMPD canine unit walked shelter dog which you mentioned earlier as part of mayor's give a day we noticed that while walking the dogs officers took the time to work with them on commands while they were having fun awesome. now isn't that <laughs> clever um, please ask your guests meaning you and you <laughs> you could have just said Ozzy and Mark but no that's kid. okay and Major Burbrink uh, to talk about the benefit of pairing officers with shelter dogs so Let's do talk about the benefits. Obviously, this dog is extremely stressed out. This is very easy. It's probably she's, one of the easier ones I've had. <laughs> she's having uh, a hard time with coping with all of the yeah, noise because um, she's passed oh, you're fine, out you're fine, next girl. to Mark. <laughs> so tell us I'm about tell us about the benefits of pairing police officers with shelter dogs, Major Burbrink. Would you start? Absolutely. Uh, so police work, as people may or may not know, can sometimes be quite stressful. Um, <laughs> I know, right? What? <laughs> As well as sometimes now she's looking adoringly at him. Look at that. Baby. Being in a shelter can be quite stressful. Absolutely, and cause anxiety. And, and you know, research has shown that uh, you know there are many health 
physical and emotional benefits to pets. Um, you know, they lower blood pressure, increase cardiovascular health. Uh, emotionally, they reduce stress and depression and anxiety. Um, all of those things are, are common in, in police officers, and so we thought it would be a good idea to pair them together. Uh, and immediately, there is, there's an immediate bond between the officer and, and the dogs when they come in, and, and just the stress and the tension in the room goes down, and, and it, instead of being a very serious place, it becomes a fun atmosphere, and they're enjoying it, and they're enjoying themselves, and they're enjoying the work they do, and you know, it, it makes them enjoy their home life more. You know, everything that happens at work tends to bleed over to home, you know, good or bad. So, uh, you know, we're just we're trying to do everything we can to improve the health of the police officers as well as the animals and get them some exposure and get them out in the community and socialize them and spoil them rotten. That's what we do. Well, you know, I love the ears on this dog because they just are doing such interesting things. And as I'm just stroking her little ear, her eyes close and then she thinks, I'm going to lie down, and then another person goes running by <laughs> here at Gordon Beerish, which is a very busy brew pub downtown, and uh, and she's so interested in what's going on around her, but man, she is relaxed. Ozzy, I want to know about your pets. I'm a bad pet owner. <laughs> My little dog rules our house. <laughs> I've got a little nine-year-old shih tzu. Bad pet owner. I'm a bad pet owner. I'm bad sorry. Bad daddy. <laughs> I'm a bad daddy. She's spoiled rotten. Um, again, we've had her nine years. She's had... Um, Two knee surgeries, a couple other little surgeries. She was a little run to the litter. We'd love to have another one, but I don't know that she plays well with others. Oh no! She kind of thinks she's human, and it's it's too late to do anything about it. So that's okay. You know what? Gonna... You just have to suck it up and take it. <laughs> we love take her. Take it like a man, Ozzy. What... I will. That's Let what her we do. just take care of you. Um, uh, so I'll tell you what. Angie Gill says she is so happy. She says thank you, LMPD which is very nice and we appreciate that Angie because a lot of people have to give uh, have to give the credit where the credit is due and that's to these these officers who are doing this right now. Thank and you for your support. Yes. Thank you for encouraging the program and for being interested in these animals and for making those phone calls and emails to come see them and to adopt them. So thank you. And thank you Catherine Krebs Rice and Jurgen Tossman who is a, a wonderful part of Bunbury Repertory Theater in town and uh, we really appreciate all the folks who have tuned in because that shows the interest that is going on about animals. And we know that it's a billion and billion and billion dollar pet industry in this country, Ozzy. I mean, my, people spend more money on the dogs and their families than they do on the kids, I think, yeah. half the time. And so it's it's important to recognize that you can buy stuff for your dogs, but the most the, the best and most important thing that you can do is to rescue the animals who are out there that need to be rescued. Yes, ma'am. How many breeds of dog are represented right now at Louisville Metro Animal Services? Because people are always like, I don't want a mutt. I want a I would, purebred actually, dog. Actually, I would pro say right now we have a pretty good selection. Um, I was out at an animal house yesterday, and I would say out of the 18 kennels, you probably had nine different dogs. Really? Yes, yes. People, so, people are complaining about the fact that you know they cannot get purebred dogs in rescue shelters, and I said that's not true. There's a rescue for every kind of purebred dog. Right. Well, a lot of those yes. purebreds, they're bred. Okay. So yeah. the, the issue we have is a hundred of my dogs right now are all homeless. They were all outcasts for one reason or another, and brought to us to care for, and they're all from Jefferson County. Yeah. All of them. Now, is the rule that you cannot bring a dog into Jefferson County unless you live here into the shelter? Yeah, we, we do not take that. Jefferson we we tell you to go to your shelter. Okay. And I do that because, number one, we have our hands full already. And number two, it's, you know, our shelter is funded through tax dollars from Jefferson County residents. Do you go out into the state ever and, and introduce concepts like this program? Will you be going out to other police departments and telling them about sure. this? Well, Tara, if the interest is there, um, this is this program's in its infancy. This is brand it's a new. Day this, old. Is, this is right, less than 24 hours old. And and I'll be honest, I had no idea that it would take off the way that it has. I, I'm very thankful and I'm very glad that it has. Um, and, and I love I love watching the officers and, and the dogs interact. Like it, it is so much fun, and it's it's amazing to watch that relationship and that bond between you know these. <laughs> Police type A personality men and women who just turn into 
little baby talking children when the dogs come in, you know? I mean, what's more innocent than, than dogs? We all go into baby talk when a dog comes Absolutely. in. <laughs> Cindy Corp says Mr. Gibson has done wonderful work. Thank you, Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, Angie Gill says there are a lot of purebred dogs every day at LMAS. Yes, they are. Which is heartbreaking in one sense and wonderful in another because it means that they're going to get adopted. Um, Mark, I'm going to ask you this, Sorry. Officer, Animal Control Officer Sabatini. You're a sergeant, right? Correct. I, I see those three chevrons on your shoulder. <laughs> were you um, were you at all surprised when you learned how awesome it could be to pair Louisville police officers with the dogs that you take care of every day? Yes, I mean it was a great idea. Um, like Director Gibson said and Major Burbank, getting them out and getting them exposure and at the same time it's good for the dog and it's good for the officer. It's a win-win situation. There's no other way to say it. Um, you know, get a dog, like we were talking about before, a dog at the shelter. It's been there for a while. Um, it's just it's great to get the dog out there, have it go with somebody, uh, get the good drive around. It's just, it, it's, it's a benefit for all. There's no other way to put it. It's how the does best the, thing. How does the dog react? How did this dog react to being in the car? And did you drive this dog around, Major Burbank, or did somebody else? <laughs> Uh, well, several people uh, drove Miss Bella around. Oh, so she uh, switched cars. She, she went from officer chauffeurs. to officer. Yes, yes. Uh, she is a very she good car rider. She enjoys the car. Um, Flex, the Rottweiler from yesterday, enjoyed the window. Bella likes being up right in the middle of the driver passenger seat, right next to your head. Right she wants to see what's going on and where you're going. Um, and she would just lay down in the back seat and just enjoy the ride. It was great. She's so precious. Did you? Do you have to wear? Um, do you have to have dog harnesses in the police cars? No, it's not possible, probably, because of all that equipment that you've got. Right. And well, and this is not really a common thing. Even in in the patrol, the canine officers' cars, they're not. I was hoping you weren't sticking her in a crate or something. No, no, no. she's free. That's good. No, she has free reign in the back seat. Yeah, Gracie likes to sit right next to me and watch everything that's going on. And the boys like to stick their heads out the windows on either side of the car. So I'm totally, totally down with that. Um, I tell you what, when you guys make videos, uh, you get some really great responses. Yes, and I'm sure do. that the Louisville Metro Police Department has documented, hopefully, all these rides that have taken place today. We, we have not. We have a media what? day set up for next week. What? We got, Sarah, we're I wasn't sure this was going to be a success, like I said, so we kind of just piloted this program for a day to see the response, which has been overwhelmingly Listen, positive. Somebody, somebody reached out to me at midnight and said, Tara, you have got to call Major Kim Burbrink and Ozzy Gibson and get them on your show before anyone else gets them. <laughs> now, has anyone else reached out to you yet? Several. Yes. All did the news. Did you get you, the exclusive, Tara? Did exclusive. you go on the air with any of them? No. Oh, it's be my tasty. God. It's I love you so much. Next Thumbs week. Up. Wait for it next week. Wait for it. Well, what? They don't have to Stay wait tuned. for it. Because they're doing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my schedule's open. Your schedule's open. That's good. So uh, so what I was going to ask you before is if you, I know that Major Burberg is just starting this out, but I can see this multiplying. My friend at Humana, actually, Lisa Cantor, started what's called a walk and wag. And she takes dogs out and Humana employees, walk them around downtown with their papers. And they've got a vest on that says, adopt me. And people can, can look at And they're from J.B. Ogle, so they're working with folks across the river. Gotcha. I can also see um, the great success that Louisville Metro Animal Services has had would be very well used if you took it out into the state because there are a lot of shelters that don't have the knowledge right. or information that are available to you. And they would probably have a lot to learn from Look at her, she's running in her sleep. From somebody with your uh, experience and success, Ozzy. Yeah, we have. You know, I'm the president of CACA, which is the Kentucky is... Animal Control Association. And we've been working with a lot of other shelters. We provide training um, once a year. We have a website up that we're gonna that we're gonna be offering free training to the rest of the state of Kentucky. So um, you know, we're looking to do some different things this year in some other shelters in Kentucky. Um, I've talked to two other counties that want to look at the managed intake for owner surrenders. Um, some of them even in eastern Kentucky. So that's huge. 
Yeah, and we always hear the horror stories about yeah. the shelters out in the state that are not able to take care of their animals. And, and I know they do their best with what they've got. 100%. But thank God you're doing what you're doing at Little Metro Animal Services. And uh, I want to thank you, Sergeant Sabatini, for all you do. And, and I know I've made several desperate calls to you for things, and you've, you've responded to them, and thank you. And now that I've got Major Burbrink's telephone number... <laughs> You're going to wish I never had. No, I'm just kidding. Ozzy was kind enough to give me his number. and Because, um, you know, I end up chasing dogs. I don't know what it is. And uh, and you also did something very kind for me a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we had a dog that was loose, not mine, but a friend's named Timmy. And there was a week-long chase and a lot of spottings. And um, unfortunately... Timmy did not survive. He was hit on 64, oh. and several people reported it, but nobody could find him, and I finally did. And the state does not pick up anything that's not in the roadway. And I told Ozzy about it, and I said, you know, this isn't a deer. This is someone's pet. And so using the incredible contacts that he has, he made it possible for Timmy to go to a place that was not going to be lying out and being, you know, dying on the median and just decaying. So we really appreciate She's going to ruin your image. Yeah, I know. <laughs> As a tough guy. He's already done it. We so already know late, he's not me. that tough. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. I'm going to be back with Pines for Parkinson's, and I have a little puppy who wants to come on and say hi from the Fatheads uh, Rescue as well. But please, stick with us in just a minute. I'm going to give um, Major Burbrink back her phone. We've been using her personal hotspot. So we're going to give her back her phone, and we'll log back on in just a minute to show you the fun and excitement that's going on down here at Pints for Parkinson's at Gordon Biersch. You better get down here because the bands have already kicked in. Looks like the beer is flowing, and I bet the boxers are going to be here pretty quickly, too. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, Bella. Love you. I hope you rest well tonight. You must be exhausted from being out on that late watch patrol. Be back in just a minute.